Happy Saturday, ladies. You're welcome to the Today's Women Show. And today is going to be extremely exciting. you find out why. We'll be right back. It's time for the monologues. This is when we hit the streets of Accra and we ask so many different women different questions. Every woman has an opinion. Let's hear what they have to say. It's not necessarily physical appearance that makes a woman beautiful, but it comes from within. How you portray yourself, how you talk, how you... You react to people, your courtesy makes you beautiful, not the out outward beauty. Your hair, your makeup, your, your, your actions, your, your walking, they are beautiful, but it's just an addition of the beauty. But the beauty of today's woman is within. I think generally beauty is what you have within, most especially when it comes to your relations with people. When you are very beautiful, outwardly and you don't relate well with people you suddenly become an ugly person in their eyes and so for me i would say that beauty is normally on the inside when you talk of today's man gone are the days when beauty was within but these days no it's not because um the youth are adapting different kind of cultures all together so beauty is some kind of a play joke that the youth are doing today. Beauty should come from within. It should be how you you do your things, just uh, not dressing and then looking beautiful. For me, I'm married. You see, from the way I handle my home and my children, should make people see some beauty in me. Not just dressing always and coming out and not even cooking or leaving food for your husband and children. Ah, it's within no. If you have a clean house, you are beautiful in everyone's face. Because beauty without any good attitude, it is nothing. It's time for the woman on the move. This is your female entrepreneur, extremely hardworking, a go-getter. Let's see who she is. Beauty, they say, lies in the eyes of the beholder. For most ladies, however, beauty is defined not only by a pretty face or a smooth skin, but also by healthy and bouncy hair. We can tell a lot from a person's hairstyle, your culture, personality, and especially your mood by how your hair is styled. Having the flair and desire to make women from all works of life look so adorable and pretty, Henrietta Agbemejo, a hairstylist at the Malamata Market, ventured into the business of professional hairstyling. While in school, she realized that her grades were too poor to carry on into a white-collar job. Not deterred and determined not to be a burden on her parents and society, she decided to go into a trade of her choice, one that will make her fulfilled and achieve her set goals in life. At school one day, I just took my bag and went home because I realized I was not understanding anything in class. My mother confronted me and I told her I needed to follow my heart's desire because it seems she was just wasting money on my education. I then told her I wanted to learn hairdressing. Upon careful consideration, she decided to enter into hairdressing and for four years now, she has yet to have any regrets. She had to start at the bottom as an apprentice, a move she almost gave up on as she had to raise money to support her apprenticeship. Henrietta had to make available a set comb, tail comb, towels, pack of rollers, hairpins, and an undisclosed amount to her madame. During her apprenticeship, she left no stone on ten in the discharge of her duties. Upon completion, her madame gave her, as a token, a hand dryer to start something on her own. 
her source of funds to start her own trade was the amount she gathered during the tenure of apprenticeship. The funds were, however, not enough. As such, she resorted to selling pure water, face towels, handkerchiefs, and champagne to cushion hair after completion of her trade. She had extra help from admirers to meet her startup capital. <laughs> After completion, I sold some of the items I used during my training and added a little amount I gathered during my graduation to serve as my source of funding. It is said behind a successful man is a strong woman and same can be said vice versa. Henrietta recounts with pride how her fiancé has been a great help. After my mother gave this place to me, my fiancé once again gave me financial support to set the place up. Her mother, seeing the desire in her child and not wanting her to go wayward, provided her with a shop in the Malamata market where she started working on her own as a hairstylist. Over the years, business has become quite lucrative, but with the emergence of uncountable shops and a lot of competitors, she has experienced a low pace in her trade of late. She has not yet had any apprentices, but Henrietta says her doors are always open as she is ready to impact her talent and experience into anyone who makes herself available. Plating of hair has become so fashionable recently with the use of ornaments, beads, ribbons, colorful yarns, threads, cuffs, along with artistic patterns to make the hair look radiant and creative. Every occasion has the sort of hairstyle it demands for. According to Henrietta, there's always hope for anyone who ventures into the field of hairstyling with proper planning and determination. Our winning woman for today is Crystal Kwame Ayi. Excitement. I mean, that's what I call her, personified. You're very welcome. I want you to introduce yourself to everybody. Hey, okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Crystal Kwame Ayi, also known as your ultimate turn-up MC, U2 MC for short. Ah. And yes, thank you so much for having me on your show. <laughs> and that's why I said it's going to be so excited. Yep. I mean, the first time I saw you, I was like mesmerized, like Ooh. taking out. I was looking at you like this. Like, who is she? Who is, who, who, what's happening? What's <laughs> happen it's just your spirit, the mm. bubble, you know, mm. the excitement and everything. So, anyway, so for those of you who don't know her, she's Crystal Kwame Ayi, okay? She's a marketing consultant. I didn't know that. But she's really known as, what, U2 MC. So, she's, she's an MC. And I was like, there are not so many women, female MCs, right? Yeah, not, not so many that I know of. Um, they are the known um, ones who are on radio, mm -hmm. so they host radio shows and television shows, mm -hmm. those are the known ones. But um, I know only a few, two other um, female MCs that um, I, I'm in the same group um, with, but aside them, I don't think, I, I don't know any others. So tell us a bit about you, okay, mm -hmm. so your childhood, yeah. okay, I mean growing up, did you think, I really want to be this lady on stage, mm -hmm. everybody looking at me, mm -hmm. I am holding the mic, right. everybody, you know, I am commanding the stage, yeah. did, you, did you think that? Yes, all of that and more. Um, funny thing is that I didn't see myself as an MC, because back then, um, we knew hostesses and hosts, right. you know. Yes. So I saw myself doing that. Um, I'd always wanted to be a performer. Um, from the days of Disney, The Sound of Music was my favorite. <laughs> chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I watched all of those. I love to perform all of those, sing all the songs. So I knew that in my future, it ha I had to be doing something um, that was performance based. Mm -hmm. um, and I also love to make people happy because then that makes me happy as well. And so once um, I'm able to transfer that kind of energy, I'm happy. So yes, I did see myself doing this and so much more. But then what did your parents say though? What did they think about mm -hmm. it? Because, you know, in our culture and everything, and I, I've, I've said it so many times on, the, on, on this seat, parents, uh, many parents generally want their children to be like, you know, the bankers, the doctors, yeah. the lawyers, you know, and all yeah. of that. So did you, did you ever mention to, to any of your parents and say like, look, I want to be a performer and what was their reaction? Um, I don't, there wasn't a time when I said 
that I wanted to be a performer. I remember when Home Sweet Home mm -hmm. um, launched, and I, I loved that show so much. I always said I wanted to be on that show when I was a little older. Um, but in my home, my dad has always, in fact, my parents have always said, you know, do school first, and then whatever you want to do after follows. And I've, I've, I've grown up to understand that doing school first is the security. Mm -hmm. After you get that security, whatever you want to do, fine. If it doesn't go so well, you can still fall back on your certificates and all of that. Right. So I understood that bit. I tried to enter you know, acting and all of that much earlier when I was in SS and all of that. But again, it came with its own you know, setbacks. I was a child, so my parents wouldn't let me. But um, the whole emceeing thing, emceeing, being a master of ceremonies, um, kind of came as I didn't really plan to be mm -hmm. a master of ceremonies. Mm -hmm. and so when I decided to be one, I was, already, I was already working. So I just had to find a balance for it. And so what was your first gig and how did you get into it? Um, my first official gig, I, there were other unofficial gigs that I did. Uh, I wasn't being paid for those underground things. Friends would call so just me like, to do you know, setting your, exactly. putting your foot on the stone. That's it. Okay. Enjoying what I did. Yes. But my first official job, um, professional, was um, Coco and um, Robert Watson's wedding. Okay. Um, I was crazy on my Snapchat at the time, and um, Coco always told me, she's a very good friend growing up, she always told me that I was going to be her wedding MC. I was always going to be her, uh, her wedding MC. I was actually kind of scared because <laughs> that was like a, a real job, you yeah. know, it was a big job. It, you are being paid to do this. You can't go and mess up, you know. So I was, I was, you know, grateful when she actually gave me her program and I had to work with that. I put in my own, you know, jokes and all of that games in there. And it actually turned out really, really well. But at a wedding, there were adults there. There were yeah. older, much older people, yeah. younger people, yeah. young, you yeah, know, yeah, much yeah. younger. Yeah. So you were able to, like, you know, handle the whole ceremony? By God's grace, yes. Um, I, for some funny reason, I find that I appeal most to um, the older people. Maybe because I've interacted with them a lot growing up. I kind of understand what they like and what they don't like. I mean, if you are very well behaved in a certain kind of way, they like those things. But if you try and joke or play around in a certain kind of way, slightly um, disrespectful, they wouldn't like mm. that. So I played around those. And I think, in my opinion, they were the happiest um, with what I did at the so end. So you were pleasing them, basically. Um, Your focus was... So, when, so this, is a, this is the next question I'll ask then. Okay. When you are emceeing a, an event, mm -hmm. is your focus on a particular group mm. and is your mindset to please that group? Mm. Do you look at, like, the majority? Mm. Or I'm asking. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I what do. are you... Mm -hmm. I do look... I, I, the, my plan is to, as much as possible, get everyone to enjoy the event. Mm -hmm. So um, there are some age groups that naturally love the event mm -hmm. uh, at some point in time. For instance, if the DJ is playing only high life, then you can tell that the older folks are going to be naturally, you know, hyped and enjoying the event. But then the younger folks would need some kind of push to enjoy it, you know. And so I try to see these things, try to understand how that works. And to avoid all of these things in the beginning of everything, before we even start the event, I try to um, speak to the DJ before time, mm. you know. So you have a sort of rapport exactly. and a connection. That's it. Okay. And then I find out from the bride and the groom as mm. well, um, what kind of... Um, uh, guests are we expecting? What's the age group, um, the chunk of the age group? What's the age group that's going to be most represented right. and all of that? And once I know, we know how to turn the music around. Right. Of course, you can't stick to one genre because mm. we all have to enjoy yes, it. Yes. But then we know how to So you work somewhere. together with the DJ. Oh, yes. Are you a DJ as well? No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Is that something you'll be looking at? Um, I can really see you. Be, I can see you spinning. <laughs> like, a, hey. listen, I, I have to take a seat. To that. I mean, just even cheers, picturing. Cheers. Che cheers. Cheers. Mm, DJ, you. MC. Hey, uh, you who too, knows? You who knows? <laughs> mm, this is really good. This is from the one to one bar here at the Mobin Pick Hotel. Mm. And today they. Gave us a lovely blue lagoon. I think that's the Mauritius, mm, some lagoon in the, the right. you know, you know, Age. somewhere. Lovely. So tell me, so do you think you see yourself, you know, DJing sometime? Um, maybe on radio. Maybe okay. on radio. But um, I'd rather speak and entertain people mm. um, with my other talents right. than, you know, just play. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So do people... Um, What's the, the best way to put it? Do people actually respect what you do? Yes. Um, you know, like when people ask you what you do and you say, oh, you know, I MC at mm -hmm. events or I host events and things like that, do they actually see that? Because like you said, okay, 
you said so many things and I want to ask you like three questions. Okay. Now the first thing you said is education first. That's what your parents said. Yeah. So you decided to go and like, you know, have an education. Were you doing something or did you do something you enjoyed? Um, or did you just want, because a few people who have said that to yeah. me have said they chose the easiest subject mm. so that they could just, you know, Maybe. quickly just pass or hurry yeah. up and just go through it. So that's what I'm asking. Did you do something that you chose because you enjoyed mm. so that if this didn't actually fall through, you would go back to do something you really enjoy? Mm. Yes. Um, I got in university to do accounting. Mm -hmm. um, and... Halfway through, I realized... This is University that, of Ghana? University of Ghana, yes. Okay. Um, in level 300, you're supposed to, you know, choose what you actually want to do. So 100 and, level 100 and 200, we all do the same courses. Okay. And then 300, you specialize. And um, during the break from 200, I was thinking, and I said, accounting is nice, but marketing actually has my heart. Hmm. And funny thing is, even when I was a child, 10 years, 11 years, we received some books from one of my uncles and there were some marketing books in there. I was reading them at that, that age. So when I saw marketing, I got a, you know, a feel of it um, in class. I just understood that that was me. That's what, yeah. Everything that I had been wishing to do, that was it in marketing. Mm. Understanding people, understanding... Um, it sort of relates to what you're doing as exactly. well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're know. you selling the program ah. on the stage. That's right. That's what it is. So that's marketing. Exactly. Yeah. And you're marketing yourself as well. That's it. Yeah. That's, it. that's really it. So um, I certainly went for something that I love. Because, I, again, I don't want to just learn and drop things. Mm. You know, from primary to JSS uh, to SS, we learn and drop things. You know, like pre-tech. We don't really... Use but we didn't have much. options, though. Well, well yeah, true. you know, I mean, those were the subjects we had to do. But this yeah. is a, this is a, 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 you know, a decision that you are making. Exactly. And I'm asking this because there are so many young women, um, you know, watching. So many, you know, even older women who are now ready to go, yeah. and this will probably help them in their decision. Mm. You know, so when you are choosing the courses, yeah. it's not about which one is the easiest Ooh. one, which one, you know, what do people normally pass? And True. they'll say, oh, do, you know, whatever it is. They'll mm. say, well, that one is easy. Mm -mm. You know, so it's not really about that because it could be easy and very boring for True. you. And if it's boring for you, you can still fail because you're not True. enjoying it. Mm -hmm. You know, but then something difficult, in quote, that you enjoy won't be difficult for you. Nice. So you have to really follow your heart and do what you want. Yeah. And that's why I wanted your opinion on if that is what you did, okay. you know, to... Yeah. Mm. My heart had to be in it. I had to choose yeah. something that I wanted yeah. to continue with. And it's a part of my everyday yeah. life. And a little Betty tells me here, I can hear Ooh. it somewhere here, that you're an actress as well. Oh. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I yes. Yeah, yes, with Roberman Productions. Tell me a bit about that. Um, Roberman Productions is another huge family um, I, I'm with. Um, I joined in 2015, mm -hmm. and basically what we do is quarterly um, stage plays okay. that incorporates dance and music. Mm -hmm. um, so every quarter, at the end of every quarter, we have um, two weekends um, of um, plays. Mm -hmm. And it's not just plays, it's something that you come and experience. And then This is the one directed by um, Uncle Ebo White. Uncle My it. mother loves hey. it. Okay, okay. That's <laughs> okay. Uncle Ebo. And so, yes. Um, I decided I, I have all these talents within me and I, a friend told me about it and I said, well, let me just audition for it. And by the grace of God, I got in and my life hasn't been the same, same ever since. I think I've been in four plays so far. Um, one I was an angel in, another... You're an angel? Yes. Oh, bless me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Janet. Take it. <laughs> yes. And... Um, then there was one that was a mother-in-law in. That's um, rejected. Okay. Yes, everybody loved that one. You know your gum, mother-in-law. Oh, crazy my woman. goodness. Yes, oh, my God. Were you wicked? You know, <laughs> very wicked. <laughs> Extremely. But it was all good. And then I did some backup, you know, vocals and all that. It's all been a fun um, and learning experience as well because... Acting is not just, you know, get up and, you know, do, you know, read your scripts, get up. No, there's a whole lot more that goes into it. It's not it. easy. It's not. Yeah. People think it's it not, is. Yes. But you can have the talent, but you need to work it. Even modeling, actually. Mm. There was one time that I was... Um, I was I was a, I was in a photo shoot mm -hmm. and I respected from that day I was like it's not like I didn't respect them before but I re that's why I even asked is your job respected I think every job should be respected mm. every job yeah you don't have to know what level of education 
right? Yeah. But as long as they are delivering, you must respect. Indeed. Because listen, to model, to actually come and stand there and pose and to get all of those, it's not easy it's at all. Not. When you have lights in front of you, yeah. you have cameras, mm -hmm. you will, and that leads me to this question. Would you call yourself a confident person? Mm. And what is your definition of a confident woman? Yeah, okay. Mm. Um... Confidence is my middle name, actually. So, okay. yes, I am a very confident is it? woman. Oh, yes, it is. Are you an Ewe? <laughs> Good one. Half Ewe, so it kind of works, right? Okay, okay. We, yeah. we like those names. We like it. Passion, confidence, Wisdom. love, hope. Yes. Yes, I love it. <laughs> so, yes. Um, I, I, I think I exude a whole lot of it. Um, there are certainly times that I, you know, get a bit scared. But mm. um, I still try to be um, as confident as possible in everything that I do. And um, your next, your other question was... What's your definition, definition of a confident woman? Yes. A confident woman is one who um, has in mind what she wants to do. Um, she knows what's, what, what, what is at stake. She knows what she wants to get. And despite the feeling of fear that may hit her at any point in time, because she knows her goals, she focuses more on those and strategizes adequately to achieve those. So yeah, I'm a marketer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm smiling and yeah. I'm so happy because you're talking about confidence, yeah. but you mentioned fear. Yeah. And this is what everybody has to know. And I get this question all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, just because somebody is confident doesn't mean that they never fear. True. It doesn't mean that, you know, that they can just walk up on any stage at mm. any time you know everybody but being confident as well that and that's what you said that i really love is knowing that you can overcome that fear yeah. to do whatever it is that you were purposed to do mm. so that's why i was just smiling because <laughs> it's always like a confirmation that i love yeah. what you're saying definitely i really really love it thank you definitely you yes did. yes yes and um let me ask what has been your most difficult um event because being an MC, you're looking at your guests. Mm. And in as much as you connect with the DJs and everything, you have to, you, you you must connect with the with the guests as well. Yeah. Have you ever been in, you know, or on a stage and thought open up and swallow me? <laughs> like, <laughs> I want to leave now. Whoa. Have you ever have you ever had a, any situation any like situation? that? Or what has been mm. your worst? I mean, you don't have to say what it worst was or, or where it was, but why was mm. it? There were two. Mm -hmm. Um, the first time I ever felt like that was um, at a wedding. Um, unfortunately, I, sometimes I get called um, last minute, so they've already booked their um, event halls and all of that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, so I'm, I'm unable to also make my inputs um, in terms of decor and everything. But what but I do you want to make inputs? Yes, because um, the the size of a room. Um, determines how, to some extent, um, how you can um, pack guests, how you can seat guests. Some people see a large room with only a few guests and they want to spread them out so widely. But the truth is that you want them to feel closer. So when you bring, this is what I have noticed, when you sort of bring the, the tables and the chairs closer, um, they are able to share in the but moment. how does that affect your job though? So if, for instance, I... Um, now, I'm referring to that, that incident. Um, I was trying to coordinate two sides of the room, mm. but they were so far, far apart, apart, one. And then in between them also, there was a whole lot of space. So it's not so easy to share a laugh with someone who's probably just behind you. So if you're laughing, you're laughing all by yourself, which isn't bad. I don't want the whole room to laugh. But I realized that there was a bit of a disconnect. Mm. So in trying to get one side of the room with, to the other side of the room, trying to get them to, you know, do... I always try to bring in some games and all of that. In trying to unite them, there was it was crazy. That, that was a oh, very difficult, wow. a very difficult wedding. Wow. But I mean, we followed through. We you know went by the program, and they ended up quite quite all right. The bride was happy, the groom was happy. So yeah, that's yeah I was it. happy at the Well, end. they're in love, so they yeah. should be happy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And the second one was in Nigeria. Um, this was just recently. Um, the crowd. You were hired from Ghana to Nigeria. To Nigeria. That's fantastic. Yes. God is good. Yeah, well done. Well <laughs> Thank done. Thank you. Um, so this is a. Um, the event was a hyped one, and I once you play the music, I'm gone. You know, so the music was going, and I was gone. But I realized that some of the people weren't good. So. I'm there thinking, as soon as I got up stage, I like to play down a bit before I get on stage. I got up stage and I, like, a voice just hits me like, oh no, it's not gonna work, just go and cry. And I'm like, no, Crystal, you are confident. Don't let this thing get to you. There's a reason you are here, do the work and get but out. you thought that they were not connected with you? Yes, because you see, there's a way to get people to 
feel the music and to enjoy because I'm not standing there just to speak. But, but I'm let me say this, okay? So let me let me let, let me let me say this, okay? okay? Now I'm just thinking about being at an event mm -hmm. and then looking at the MC and wondering what is he or she doing? Yeah. You know, sometimes you think that you probably get on there and then you are so excited that you're just thinking about yourself. Do you think that? <laughs> I, is it possible? Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm thinking about myself. That's one thing I've always told myself, that the MC is to help make the event a success. And what is the event? The people and the people mm. being celebrated. Mm. So I'm just privileged to help coordinate all of that. Mm. So I'm never trying to get attention for myself. Mm. You know. So I come with that idea. And I'd like to mention that a lot, in a lot of my intros, that today we are here not because of me, because but of because me. of yeah, the people that we are celebrating. Mm. And you are a part of this. They want you to enjoy the experience. That's why we have, you know, all the music, all the food. It's for all of you to enjoy. So don't sit back and, you know, think that, okay, it's going to be one of those shows. No, it's for all of us to enjoy the experience. Let's make this a memorable one. But so. maybe there are some people who are enjoying it, but they're not just very bubbly. Yeah. But they, so they can sit back and smile, but they're just loving they're it. Just, but yeah, you are probably you. like, woo, woo, woo. You, you know. Know, so you probably, is, is that also a, a, a possible case? Um, yes. That that you want the whole room to be like because the first time i met you and i thought i was i told you i was looking at <laughs> yeah. you like i mean you led me to be moved I, I i mean i felt like if i don't move this girl will call me <laughs> <laughs> but you were very like yeah go 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 so is that your style what would you yeah. say your unique selling point is would you is that your style yes um my unique selling point has always been my energy, mm. you know, and I come in with creative things all the time. So it's, it's not the same all the time. Certainly the hype is there. And so, I mean, as I said, the way I know to enjoy things is to be up and going, you know, just have a good time, just dance. Even if you don't know how to dance, just dance, you know, just let it go. So um, that's really it. It's just to have people um, n not have... To, uh, to encourage people to not have regrets. Mm. You know, because sometimes you go to an event and you really wished you could dance. And then you get back home and you're like, shoot, I wish I had actually done it. I don't want you to have regrets. Have, have you ever lost um, a job because you're a woman? Um, and if that's the case, why would a male MC be preferred? Um, I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head if I've actually lost a job because of that. Again, I try not to think... Um, about think, such things because again, you know, as you said, it's a, it's a male-dominated um, industry. industry. So I sometimes expect people to um, act like that. But there are times when I get into a client's um, office, mm -hmm. you know, we get to get, get get into a meeting, and I realize they are shocked immediately. Sometimes it's um, one of their um, colleagues who you know, suggested I be their MC or something like that. And so I get in, and in the first place, he wasn't uh, expecting a man. So then the kind of questioning that comes in all just suggests, can you do the job, mm. you know? Well, what are they expecting from you? So let's say, can you tell us two different gigs and what they expect? So if it was a, if it was a corporate one, okay. what are they sort of expecting? Mm. If it's a wedding, for example, what are they what, sort of ex they expecting? expecting? Yeah. Corporate usually, usually from what I've seen, um, straight, you know, get to the business and let's get out. Mm. So, but then again, there are two types. So if, for example, it's a corporate dinner, it's a bit light, mm. even though there's, there's some formal um, structure. Mm. But then they expect a bit of, you know, joking here and there, a few games and all of that. So that's, that's okay. What I realize that they, they want from um, the MC a lot of the time is a bit of energy. But you see, not many women, um, how do I put this? M women are not exactly seen to give off, you know, crazy energy to be able to hype a crowd because they want a man who can be zero in a second and then hundred mm. in the next, you know, going on top of the music, you know, shouting and hype and making it great. They don't expect me to be able to do that till I get there and I'm So does the way doing... you dress affect? Because um, I've seen, um, well, I've actually seen some MCs, mm. female MCs that actually are yeah, very, very tomboyish, yeah. you know, and they even dress that way, mm. you know, and, and everything. And I've seen MCs as well, female MCs, yeah. that are also very, very, very feminine, yeah. but still have the hype. Yeah. A lot of people just, you know, associate their energy with male, yeah. you know, so they even expect that even if you're a woman and they're giving you the job as a woman, yeah. but come as a man. Yeah, I feel it on that one. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So does it affect your style? Um, certainly not. My style is... A certain way, um, African edgy, 
and daring. That's really my style. But again, um, because in past my past experiences, I realized that sometimes I have to run around. You mm. know, sometimes there's maybe a communication gap somewhere. So my style is always to have um, pants on, trousers on. I'm, I always have trousers okay. on with a lot of pockets for my okay. mic and my pads and my pens and all of those things because you never know what mm. you need to do at any point in time. There was one event where um, there was a gap in communication and I had to run around the whole event hall over and over and over again trying to get... We didn't so have walkie-talkies either. You have to have comfortable shoes ah, on. Okay, well, I wear my heels anyway. Wow. I test okay. run them, but yeah. I, they, they always have to be um, on point. So th that doesn't really affect my dressing. I just have my trousers and I'm good to go. Okay, yeah. that's exciting. That's exciting. Now, what are you, you know, what's your vision? Mm. What are your plans, if it's not a secret? <laughs> like, what are you really looking to do? And mm. what do you think is the future of this industry, your mm. industry? It's, um, so I'll start from my plans. Um, really, I just want to be able to continue entertaining people. Um, be a household name, uh, Crystal, your ultimate turn up MC, you two MC for short. You know, for people to um, see the woman and say, you know what, this is power and I can mm. do the same. You know, it's for her to be a, 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 inspired by what I'm doing. I want to um, get in there, you know, radio, television, just entertain people all in all. Because again, that's what brings me so much joy. Mm. So, in terms of my MCing, this is really it. Right. I have some other. Um, things that I'm doing that, um, you know, they, they will come along the line in terms of my marketing communications right, and all of that, right. yes. Um, the, the, the industry is growing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, of, I've seen some women show interest. And so I'm, I'm sure that in about two, three years, we should see a lot more women um, showing up in this industry. There is a great future for it. Um, recently, um, there was an organization. Um, we have an association now, the okay. Events Vendors Association of Ghana. Okay. Um, yes. And, and that's both male and female? Yes, all events vendors. Okay. You know, so from decor to lighting, all oh, of that. Oh, yes, I think I heard about vendors. it. Yeah. Yes, yes. So we're all coming together um, to have a proper structure in mm -hmm. everything that we do mm -hmm. in terms of rules and regulations, everything. So I think that that would make it even more encouraging for others who have been thinking about it to join in. So you're talking about others to join in, and you sound even excited about it. Yeah. But here, in mm. our culture, mm. we don't understand competition. Mm. Or we see competition as enmity. Yeah. And I keep talking against that. Yeah. I keep saying that your competitor is not your, your enemy. True. You know, and you shouldn't be afraid of... Because you, I asked you what your unique selling point is. And everybody is unique. Indeed. So everybody has their selling point That's so it. that the thing is to know what it is and to market that once you have that nobody's your competition really mm -hmm. you know and you'll be chosen for a particular reason now talking about that do you look up to anybody as a mentor is there anybody that you are watching from afar that you love man or woman and mm. w what is the reason you know what's your take on mentorship thank you um i have never really understood mentorship yes because i've always been independent so i want to go out and try things for myself and i want to go out and do things and if i fail or if i'm failing I, i'll wise up <laughs> you know or i then go to um if i if i'm what haven't you understood about mentorship um i think i've seen it as not exactly surrendering to someone, but for lack of a better word. I see, to some extent, I see it as you don't understand um, where you are playing, and so you want to... A guide? You, yeah, you want a guide, you know. That's how I see it. So there are some people that um, I go to as and when I do need some information, but I don't see them as a mentor per se. Um, but, you know, but a mentor can also be somebody that you just look up to, yeah. that you admire so much, yeah. so you are inspired by yeah. that person. You don't have to know them. Know them. They don't True. have to know even that they are your mentor. True. You True. know, you True. Don't, they don't, you know, they're not guiding you in a way in because a way. they don't even know. True. So who do you look up to? Hmm, quite a number of them, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. um, Kabute, my MC, you know Kabute? Yes. Kabute is, Kabute is a great friend and um, he's, he's, he's also been there. He's... Um, great MC. I absolutely love his work ethic and it's certainly something to, um, to emulate. Um, there are a few others that 
I've seen. A lot of them are outside as well. I'm talking about Jeannie Mai. Mm -hmm. um, she's, um, she worked with the Style Network. She's one person that I've, I've always um, loved to, to watch because, again, her style is very different. Mm -hmm. She brings a lot of energy to the plate. So I, I'm now we're down to these two, Jeannie Mai and then Kabute Mai MC. That's amazing. And yeah. Now, there's a lady watching you. Mm -hmm. She probably You are probably her mentor, <laughs> and you don't know it. And yes. she's probably thinking, oh, I love this lady. I've seen her on Uncle Ebo's, you know, stage mm -hmm. one time, or I follow her on Instagram or something. And, mm -hmm. you know, but then they just feel like, can I do anything at all? Can I do something? Mm -hmm. I just want you to give a word of inspiration to some woman out there. It could mm -hmm. be on anything. I don't mm -hmm. know. But just inspire somebody today. Okay. okay. All right. So, hello, woman. Um, quick one to you. Whatever you decide you want to do, you should be sure of what you want to do first and foremost. You can't just jump on the trend because everybody is doing, say, hairstyling. You want to do hairstyling because everybody is doing MC. You want to do MC. Decide what you want to do. Know for a fact what you want to do so that when you're faced with challenges or whatever, you can still stand and say, I'm going to continue because this is really what I want to do. And now when you identify those, pray about it because it's so important. Sometimes mm. you want to do something, but God doesn't want you to do it, at least not now, you know. So timing is important. God's approval is important. Pray about it. And then take the step. When you take the step, you will certainly face um, challenges. Take the step anyway. And we've talked about mentors now. <laughs> Find a mentor, someone that you can communicate with. Some people don't have, um, they don't have much um, to, they don't have much, what's the word, information um, to base their questions on. But find out, do a bit of research, and then when you have problems, you can bring that, the research or the information to your mentor so that you can have a more fruitful discussion. I think that's one thing about the mentorship that I got a bit mixed up. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, and just go, go for it. Follow your heart. Do everything that you can to get it, get it done um, and help people out as well. You can't enjoy um, success by yourself. So that's it. It's been amazing having you on the show today. You. you really turned up, I have to say. <laughs> she is the YouTube MC. It was really, really good. And I can tell you this, your future is going to be so exciting. Amen. Because Amen. that is just the spirit that you carry. Mm. And I'm so happy for you. I'm following you. Yay. I'm following you. I'm and I'm going you. to see, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah, I wish you all the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you too. are today's woman. Mm. It's time for the Trendy Women. This is when we talk about fashion, lifestyle, beauty. And today, we're going to be talking all about brass and with none other than Julia Jenfi. She's the CEO of Beautiful Beneath. Very, very welcome. So Thank today, you. we're going to talk about brass with ladies. Okay, there's so many different questions that they normally ask. A lot of women don't know what their real bra size is. How important is it? in buying a bra and in wearing a bra? Oh. Bras give you the um, support because these, I mean, if you're endowed and you're not getting a good support, it's going to be flapping. You're going to be, um, you can walk sideways because if you're not balanced, you're going to um, walk sideways. You're going to have coverage of the spine just because you're not wearing the right size bra. Okay. So we need to get measured okay. and wear the right size bra so that you're straight. Me, I'm very short, but since my boobs are up, you could see my waistline. And it will make you sit up straight, walk straight, and um, you avoid all those medical um, problems. So those are the reasons. So these are some of the reasons for getting measured correctly. Yes. Okay, please. so to, 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 to take care of your spine. Yes. Okay, and also, do you said something about the waistline that, are, that has gotten me so excited. Please repeat so that if, again. If you're not wearing a right size bra, which usually because I do this job, I'm always looking and you see ladies and their boobs are already here on their belly. So there's it's heat like oh. underneath and um, they can have rashes and all that. So when you're wearing the right size, but you're lifted, you're not on your belly, then you see your nice, your body, your waistline. Yes. 
Okay, okay. Now, some ladies don't go and get fitted. Number one, they say, oh, it's so expensive. I mean, you, you find that, I mean, when we're in, when, when boarding school, there were, there were probably some, uh, you know, young ladies who never changed their bras. I mean, until the bra was finished, basically. <laughs> like, they wouldn't change it. How often should you change your bra? You know, why are all of these things important? So, um, changing your bra is how many you, you own at a point in time. Okay. Um, our body changes, mm -hmm. so you'll not be size two as you've grown up and whatever. Our body size changes. As you change your dress, as you change your shoe size, every mm -hmm. people change their mm -hmm. shoes. You need to change your bras too. Mm -hmm. And if you see that like, your bra is not giving you the support you have, mm -hmm. and um, it's not holding you up well, you need to change your bra. So how do you know I've got good support? Oh. For those who don't know, because you're a specialist. Okay, now somebody doesn't know that my bra is not, or my breasts are not supposed to be doing this or doing that. So how would, how would a woman, you know, what are some of the tips that we could share with women out there for them to know that, oh, so all along this bra, you know, is not the right size. Because they probably don't know. So what you mean, um, if like beautiful Benin, you can come in and get measured as free. Yeah, I tell people a lot. Come in, get measured, go to your cataman to go wherever you want to buy your bra, it's fine. But I just want ladies to come in and I'll show you how to measure yourself and um, how to pull yourself in so the wire is of the breast tissue. The wire has to be all the way back. You have to scoop it in to bring all your breasts in so the wire is not on the breast tissue as you walk about. Because with all these rays, um, s rays and all that, telephones and stuff, if the wire is on your breast tissue, it's causing you very um, harm. Mm. So um, to get measured, we or to wear a good bra, you just need the support from here. So if it's not enough to give you support, you will see it. Because most of the time, people rely on the straps to get support, and they will be pulling the straps, mm. and it tends to dent. They will have dent in their right, shoulder, right. and they will think, that, "Oh, the bra is killing me." And when they want to get home and take off the bra very quickly because it's uncomfortable, that means mm -hmm. you're wearing the wrong size mm -hmm. bra. So if you're a lady that goes home. And immediately you get that you want to take your bra off, you're wearing the wrong, the wrong bra. side. But how about how the breast moves as well? Because sometimes some ladies are walking, but their breasts are dancing. Like, <laughs> they are, I, I, I say sometimes the breast can even be clapping as they're just walking gently. Sure. So if you're wearing the right size bra, the, the, it's supposed to tuck. This is supposed to go there and all your breast tissue is in. So if it's tucking, there's no way it's going to dance. Mm. So if you're right, wearing the right size bra, everything is going to be in. This part is supposed to hit your chest wall right. like that. So it's not going to dance because right. they are separated and they are both in their cups. Okay. Yeah, okay. So it won't clap. Okay. Now, I don't know about your boutique. I mean, being the expert that you are, I'm sure you have a variety and a range of sizes. But a lot of women in Ghana complain that sometimes they can't get their size. So we, you know, as African women, a lot of us are very voluptuous, very curvaceous. A lot of us are busty. You know, we are quite well endowed. We've got it naturally, <laughs> basically. You know, but then sometimes you go into a boutique and you can't even find the right size. You know, so do you have all the sizes available? And then some people are so maybe educate some women out there. You know that some people, some women feel embarrassed to to wear a big size. <laughs> Um, that's, that's not the issue at all because, um, this bra, for instance, is a 34 double D. Okay. So somebody will hear double D and feel like it's big. Yes. No, because the band is a smaller band, you just get a bigger cup to compensate for it. And moreover, it's the style of the bra. So right. this bra is a back on it. So if right. you, you want a little coverage, you need to do a double D to, to get more coverage. Right. So you, just, you shouldn't be shy because people are paying money to get... To pay money to and get their boots, so if you got it naturally, yeah. I have all the sizes. Can you pass me this bag? Sure, like sure. Double G bra. Okay. So no matter what your sizes, this is a very nice balconet, especially for us that wear kaba. It has strap, mm. but it's cut different, so you can wear any open clothes kaba, and, and your straps will not be showing. So I have every size you can think of. This is a thirty-six G. So our sizes ranges from A to N to O to a J. Okay. We have every single size okay. you can think of. Okay. I remember um, a few years ago, I was in the UK and I went to get measured and I was quite surprised because I was a particular size. I'm not coming to tell everybody my size. <laughs> so I was a particular size and I went to a different store to get measured and I mean, they jumped me up like, 
I'll say alphabets, like seven alphabets. Yeah. Um, you know, and then, <laughs> but this was after I'd had my son. And the lady actually explained that even after breastfeeding, the shape of your breast can change. And what she explained that, I mean, I love that she explained. So I knew the reason. And I, so I, I really don't, you know, I, I don't care. You know, as long as I have the right bra that fits me well Definitely. and I'm comfortable and everything, I'm fine. But what she explained that I really, really liked was she was saying that our bodies change, especially after childbirth, especially after breastfeeding. So sometimes it's not just about the size, meaning that it's you are big, yeah. so big, mm -hmm. but sometimes even the shape of your breast. Sure. Like, you know, so you could, you, could be, you could be wearing like a G, maybe because your breasts are very wide right. out. Yes. Or if you're doing a 32 band, which is very tiny, mm -hmm. but your boobs are big. So usually it's for the so European women. So you can be a small... They're very skinny, but they but, have... Right. They are very indulged. Okay, yes. okay. So that's why we should come and test definitely, it, really. Definitely, okay. You need to... Um, have, um, and I think ground. you know I've seen one on one of them I saw some sexy somewhere. So <laughs> let's talk about sexiness and brass. Okay, so how are brass sexy? I'll pretend like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you tell us. I don't know. Okay. So how are bra brass sexy? And should we all wear sexy brass? Definitely. Um, I like um, if you have a sexy bra on, like you feel confidence by yourself. You can be single, have a partner, but when you have a sexy bra on, you, your confidence just boobs up. Like, honestly, you know. I mean, you have a, a sexy, you're a woman, so definitely you know. When you have something sexy on, you are so excited, it's just confident boost. Okay. And it's, yeah, it gives you a nice, um, whatever you're wearing, and um, you, you feel good. Yeah. You feel good. And you then maybe, can you please um, advise the ladies out there on how to take care of their bras? Okay. So how often do you, should you wash it? I mean, if maybe the band is broken, should you sew it? Should you glue it? I mean, some of the things that you hear and the things that you see, you know, stitches, or they, somebody can even put some other band <laughs> somewhere, you yeah. know, and all of those things. So um, what I, what you, if you have, um, if you have like multiple bras, it's, it's easier. Mm -hmm. It makes it last longer. Mm -hmm. So if you just have one bra or two bras, it, it, it goes it go, it goes bad quick, mm. and you have to replenish f uh, faster. Mm -hmm. So what you do is, if you wear this bra today, you don't wash it today. You air dry it. Okay. Then you wear another one. Mm -hmm. Then you air dry, so the elasticity come back after the stretch. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we just sit down and relax and make it come back to shape. So after like two wears, then you wash it. Okay. If you wash, um, probably if you put in a washing machine, it has to go in a mesh bag, and you, don't, okay. you never put it in a dryer. You hang it out to dry. Mm -hmm. And I advise that if even you wash it, um, once in a while you just take stock of all your lingerie, your bras, your panties, use warm water to wash it to kill all mm. the germs and stuff and mm. dry it so on like a dry line. Yes, like, you know, yes. just mm -hmm. like a once deep while, cleanse. Yes, you take Okay. Stop off it. Okay. But, some um, people, I remember when we were in, 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 um, in boarding school, and some people would soak their bras and underwear and everything in Dettol, camphor, you know, all of those things. Should you do that? I mean, it's, it's a uh, sanitizer, so um, it depends. Um, some do you think it's too harsh? Yes, this is what I was going to say. Some of them will break their elasticity if it's uh, like um, colas, like Dettol and stuff like that. So it depends. They have lingerie shop or something that is mild mm. can, can do it, mm. but don't. Um, although you but want. even uh, the harshness, I'm even thinking about the closeness, especially when it's, it's you know, underwear. I mean, mm. a time will come when you come and we'll be talking about underwear. Today we're talking about brass. But, I mean, just as a tip, you know, that sometimes, like, the, the especially with the naphthalene balls, like the comforts and all of that, putting your lingerie in there, then wearing it at that intimate, sensitive place, sometimes that actually causes certain Infection, reactions. Yes, it yes. Does. It does. I mean, um... People have their beliefs and stuff, but we keep saying that um, it's lingerie, keep it clean. Mm -hmm. It's going to your body, keep it very hygiene and stuff mm. like that. But mm. people have beliefs that they want comfort and all that. Mm. Um, it's so hard to tell people about myths and they, they, that's what and they the, do. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. It's, 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 uh, you it's said something earlier on. You said that it's free to come to you yes. for a test, sure. for, for to get, to, yes. to get so measured, to and then they can go really anywhere to get your bra. Okay, yes. okay. So that you so when people come to you, if people can come to you, for example, and they say, "Oh, maybe I can't afford this," do you recommend other places, or they find like how do they know where to go? Um, honestly, I I know few lingerie places, but okay. I know that most people go to um, Accra Central to buy bras. So, okay. so far as I show you how to wear the bra. 
and tell you the size and you go wherever you can go to find it. Um, the size, I have a lady in Laboni, Connie Deluza, like she carries my brand. So if there's no, a size I don't have, I can just call her or tell you to go there. But um, for any other person that wants, I'll just show you how your size, maybe your 36C, so go get wear brass here, right. this is this, this. And if anywhere they can find their brass, they can definitely yeah. go. And would you say it's safe to wear secondhand lingerie? <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, this is really important, really. We really need to educate the women out there. It's, 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 it probably is a sensitive <laughs> question, but this show is to educate the women out there. Today's woman has to be her best. Sure. Today's woman has to live long. Definitely, you we, know. So, yeah. so, and you know, I'm sorry if I push you on the edge, but we really need to, we need to put it out there. Sure. And even if they do, then what should they do? Okay. Um, everything that they buy from second hand needs to be washed. Mm -hmm. I mean, underwear needs to be washed. It doesn't matter where you get it from. Mm -hmm. It needs to be washed. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you can just put few money together mm -hmm. to get a bra that it's that will last you longer. Because that's what I feel. Somebody feel like, oh, this bra is expensive. But you go and buy a bra that will last them a month. And you're going back to buy again. You're going back so to you buy again. So you keep buying it. Sure. Then. So if you mm. invest in the good Quality. bra, it, it will last you. Mm. You know? Mm. Then, yeah. But um, it all depends on how people can afford. And mm. we, we have to put that, sense, like you said, sensitive. So if you can get it from second hand and clean and wash mm -hmm. it and dry it and make sure that... Um, it's disinfected enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can. Use and what it. about wearing wet lingerie? Because again, I mean, all of this, I'm just re re remembering, you know, boarding school and all that. Like somebody's washed her bras, is drying, it's not yet dry, but then she goes to take it to where it's there to dry on hair, you know, and, and, and things like that. You know, what are some of the dangers <laughs> to That's, that? That is a very bad hazard. Like it's a hazard. Um, wet body with lingerie. Um, the bacteria is going to grow so quick. Mm. Yeah. So mm. you're going to get infection and all that. No, we cannot be done. I mean, we're teaching our people to wear good bras so they don't even get wetness. So the fungi won't be there. So right. if you're wearing something wet on your body, definitely it's going to grow so quick. Yeah. <laughs> on you. Yeah. yeah. So that's even it's, worse. It's, it's bad. Yeah. Just let it dry. Wash yeah. it and make it dry. So that's why you need a couple of bras. One yeah. is on you. Yes. One is dirty, one is drying. Yeah. 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 So you yeah. need at least five yeah. in your closet, like five. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there are days. so many women watching now and thinking, I didn't know this. Oh, wow, I didn't know this. So I want to give you the opportunity to say, to share three tips on bras with women out there. Three tips. So get measured. Like me, for instance, I can see your picture and tell you your size and it's going to work. Ladies, you heard it. You heard it. All Juliet has told us today, get your breasts properly measured make sure you're wearing the right bra and for all of those who are so crazy crazy about cinching your waist the bra that you wear also affects your silhouette so we want to look heavy we need to wear the right bra thank you so much for coming on Juliet I'll be seeing you soon sure. thank you thank so you much. so much we'll be right back It's been an amazing show today. Thank you so much for joining me on the Today's Woman. And I can't thank my sponsors enough. Thank you so much, Movepic Ambassador Hotel, for this beautiful, lovely set. This is a presidential suite. Thank you for the one-to-one -one bar for our lovely cocktails. Many thanks to GTP and also to Yaz Sanitary Pad. Thank you so much to you, the listener out there. You are today's woman and you have to keep watching. I'll catch you next week, Saturday, 11 a.m. on TV3 and also on DSTV channel 279. Follow me at ReneQGH on Instagram and all social media and I'll see you next week. Stay blessed, everybody. Love you.